In this video, I'm going to talk about the anatomy and the nomenclature of a bear track. We will also talk about how to measure the size of a track. And third, we'll talk quite a bit about how to recognize the difference between a black bear track and a grizzly bear track. This is April. And in Yellowstone, the first bears are starting to come out of hibernation. By the second week of March, it's estimated about 30% of the males will be out, and some of the females will start coming out. Snowpack is well above normal this year, so things are a little bit behind schedule. Most people think it's easy to identify a bear track, but it's really not. I know I make a lot of mistakes because when I come back and examine the video, I find out I was wrong. So in this video, I want to try to point out some of the problems that you might have when trying to decide if you're looking at a black bear track or a grizzly bear track. Now before I start talking about tracks, let me just talk a little bit about when the bears start emerging from hibernation. According to people that have been doing a lot of grizzly bear study in the Yellowstone Eagle system, they say that in January the cubs are born. In February some of the males start to exit the dens. In March, 30% of the males are out of the dens by the second week. Females are just starting to come out. By the third week of March, 50% of the males are out. Fourth week of March, females with cubs start to emerge. And by May, 90% of the bears will be out. And the very last bears will be out by the third week of May. And just one other interesting note. Breeding season for grizzly bear begins in the middle of May. Okay, now let's start talking about the track. Like humans, a bear has five toes. But unlike humans, the big toe is on the outside of the foot. Scientists like to call the toes digits, but in this video we're just going to call them toes. This is a right front foot in this picture. Toes are labeled one through five starting at the inside or little toe up to the outside big toe. Scientists call the large pad the interdigital pad, but we're just going to call it the main pad. Sometimes if you have a perfect print, you can see a small pad be behind the interdigital pad called the proximal pad. In this photo, if you look at the front foot, Right behind the interdigital pad, you can see the proximal pad. And of course, we have claws. We will want to examine the claws carefully because they can be one of the best indicators on if we're looking at a black bear or a grizzly bear. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how you go about measuring a track. There's a right way and a wrong way. And 90% of the time, people measure a track the wrong way. Now let's look at two different tracks. Here's a track on a hard surface. And here's a track in soft mud. When an animal walks on a soft surface, like uh, 
soft dirt, sand, or mud, like in this case, the foot is pressed into the mud and it splays or presses the mud outward, making the track look far bigger to the eye than it actually is. So here's a cross section of a footprint in the mud. You notice there's something called a variable outline and another measurement called the minimal outline. A track on a very hard surface is only going to have pretty much a minimal outline, like this one. But in a real soft surface like mud, the mud is actually pressed out wider than the actual foot. So it makes the track look bigger, like this one. So what we like to do is try to recognize the minimal outline and use that to measure the size of the track. So if you look at this diagram, right at the bottom of the track where it starts to turn up or turn upward, that is the minimal outline. The variable outline is the false reading. Now not everybody's idea of where the track starts to turn upward at the bottom will be the same, but it will be much more accurate than taking the variable outline. So uh, for consistency, trackers always try to determine the minimal outline. So if I take a look at my track in the soft mud here, I've uh, outlined my minimal outline and my variable outline. The minimal outline in this track is about five inches. The variable outline is six inches. Now in Yellowstone, the average size of a male grizzly bear is about 450 pounds and the width of its front foot is about five inches. Now my minimal outline measurement in this print is five inches. So that would make this an average size 450 pound grizzly bear. If I made by mistake my variable outline measurement of six inches, I would think I was looking at and above average size bear of probably over 500 pounds. Another measurement that will help me determine the size of a bear is its stride. A stride is the distance between where the same foot touches the ground to where it touches the ground again. So what the distance measurement of a stride will tell me is the distance between the front shoulders and the back hip. So I can use the measurement of a stride to help determine the size of a bear. But you have to be careful. As shown in this track, bears normally walk fast, which causes an overstep which means their stride is longer than normal. So if I want to accurately measure the stride of a bear, I really need to find a track where the back foot is landing directly on top of the front foot. As you can see in this track, there is no overstep. So I can get a pretty accurate measurement of its stride. This track happens to be a black bear with a stride of about 38 inches. Now here's a grizzly track with no overstep and it has a measurement of 49 inches. I also measured the minimal outline of its front foot and found it is five inches. So that makes this bear a very average size male grizzly bear in Yellowstone.
now that we have the preliminary stuff out of the way, we can start talking about how to recognize the difference between a black bear track and a grizzly bear track. When examining a bear track, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, is this a front foot that I'm looking at or is this a back foot? If you're looking at a back foot, it makes it extremely difficult in determining if it's a grizzly bear or a black bear. They are very similar. If the track is not very good, which is normally the case, then you will need to examine the animal trail to try to determine which tracks are back feet and which ones are front feet. The hind foot or back foot looks more like a human foot and both black bear and grizzly bear look very much alike. Next, you have to be very careful that you're not looking at a print that has actually two prints on top of each other. Look closely at this track. It looks like he's got six toes. The next thing to take a look at, and these are a dead giveaway, is the claws. If they're one and a half to two times longer than the corresponding toe, then you can be sure you're looking at a grizzly bear. But if the claws are not extended out from the toes that far, then you can't be sure. The reason I say that is a grizzly bear that has been digging a lot in rocky soil can have short claws. Now if you cannot determine the track by examining the claws, you'll have to use a method called the Palmisciano method. This is where it's important to determine the big toe and the little toe. In other words, you've got to be able to decide if you're looking at a right foot or a left foot. In this case, we're looking at a right foot. So what we'll do is draw a line with a straight edge starting at the bottom of the big toe. Then your straight edge must just intersect the top of the interdigital pad. And then you examine where it intersects the little toe. So if more than half of the little toe is above the line, it's a grizzly bear. If more than half of the little toe is below the line, it's a black bear. So by using this straight edge method, I can see that this track is a black bear. And in this track, the toe, the small toe, is above the line. So this is a grizzly bear. Now, as I said, it's difficult to try to determine if you're looking at a black bear or a grizzly bear. It's not always easy. So I've been using this good track in this video. So what is this? Is this a grizzly bear or a black bear? Okay, well I'm going to look at the front foot. The foot on the left is obviously a back foot. So the front foot is the one on the right. Now you can tell it's the right front foot because the big toe, I can see the big toe there. And I, in this track, I can see the proximal paw. And also the widest part of the interdigital pad will be on the outside. One other thing to note is bear walk pigeon toed. They walk with their toes pointing inward. So I can tell that this is a right front foot. Now if I take a look at the claws, I cannot really make a determination. They're not out there as far as I would like for a grizzly bear. But like I said before, it could be a grizzly bear with worn down claws. 
So now let's try the uh, straight edge method. It looks as though the little toe down at the bottom is below the line which would make this a black bear. But even with this track, which we thought was a good track, it is not easy as you can see. One other thing to note is in a black bear track, the little toe does not always show up very well. So I'm going to say that this is a black bear track. Let's take a look at this track. I can't really see the claw marks very well, so we'll have to use the straight edge method. So I draw my line from the bottom of the big toe across the top of the interdigital pad and look at where it intersects the little toe. And I can see that more than half of the little toe is above the line. So this is a grizzly bear. Well, that's about it for bear track recognition. I hope this makes your experience in Yellowstone a lot more fun. Thank you for watching.